Remember the old Darlington house? The one on the end of Parker Street at the south end of town? Remember? That was the one where we used to slip through the basement window when it was raining and play hide-and-seek when our parents thought we were at each other's houses? Remember all the fun we had sneaking around that basement, always so careful not to let anyone know where we were, we were so good at playing hide-and-seek. Sometimes it took us hours before everyone was found. We used every room in that basement, workshop, bathroom, laundry. We had a ball. The workshop we actually only used one time. It was really creepy. There were tools there that must have been around since the 1700s. Some we couldn't identify. Others looked surgical. We figured the old owners used to just collect weird stuff. It's not such a far-fetched idea. Some people called Nazi artifacts, so why not medical buffs? We played in that cellar until the summer of our senior year. That was when we all got our first jobs, except for Stephen who got a summer job at Benji's in his junior year. We got so busy we didn't get a chance to get together for our hide-and-seek. After that, we sort of went our separate ways. Joey went to college. Gina joined the Air Force, and as for me? I got a job in real estate. I was the one who got the assignment to sell the old Darlington house last August. I figured I could make a good sales pitch to a nice family with a few kids. I could even show the kids all the good hiding places I'd used in the good old days. Before showing a house, we always do a clean out. We like to make sure there are no infestations or smells that might offend prospective buyers. I went in with my boss Miss Polly. I'll never get what I saw that day out of my head. In the kitchen, tied to a chair by ropes now long since frayed, was a small skeleton. It looked like it had been a child. Maybe ten or twelve. It was missing both of its hands. I wanted to run out of there, but Miss Polly shook her head and went into the hallway, motioning me to follow. The second body we found was older, but just as dead. It was positioned on a tall pole suggesting that whoever it had been had died of impalement. I shuddered as I looked at the hat that rested upon the skull, hinting at a twisted sense of humor on the part of the killer. Miss Polly picked up her cell phone and called for the police. They told us to leave the house but to remain on the property so they could question us. We waited, though I wanted to get the hell out of there as soon as I could. They searched the house and found three more bodies. I don't even want to think of what might have been done to them. The most disturbing thing is, that the murders had all taken place about ten years ago. At same time we were all playing hide-and-seek in the basement.